Syrians and not be able to, to follow through, they'll call you out on it. And that's cause, because at the end of the day, it's, it can be life or death. Because we're putting our hands in each other's, uh, we're putting our life in each other's hands. Amen? Amen. And so, but is it not the same way within the church? Amen. We need, if, if we're going to talk to talk, we need to walk to walk. Because people's eternal life has been put in our hands so we can show them the way. And just like we used to, you know, uh, there's a lot of people uh, out here today that, that their actions don't match the words. Now, when I worked down at the alternative school, it was, it was a pretty strict regiment down there. They had written out uh, protocols, the kids, how they're supposed to stand in the hallway, you know, how they... How they drunk from the water fountain. It was it's all laid out. You had to hold the one hand bend down, and it, it was all laid out. The, every everything was, and that's what we held the students accountable to. But it always blew my mind uh, when we was had them in the hall, uh, getting ready to dismiss them as they was coming in, was checking them in. You know, we was holding the students accountable to stand there on their dot. That, but you look down, and you had all kind of the teachers. Leaning on the wall, have their feet on the wall. I thought, we need to be that example for the students. How can we hold them accountable for something we don't hold ourselves accountable for? You know, so that's what, that's what we're going to look at today. And, you know, a lot of times us church folk are just as guilty as everybody else of not talk, as not uh, walking that long. You know, uh, one of, uh, one of the, the introductions uh, uh, to one of the one of the songs I like. What if I stumble? It, it said this. It says, "What an unbelieving world finds unbelievable is Christians who acknowledge Christ with their mouth and deny them with their lifestyle." Let me say it again. What an unbelieving world finds unbelievable are Christians that acknowledge Jesus with their with their mouth. And deny with their lifestyle. You know, there's so many people that 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 look at some of the us as the, as the church, and they see how we act, and they're like, "Well, they ain't no better than we are." We, uh, you know, we uh, they they're like they 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 cussing and 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 drinking and doing everything that we're doing. So, well, they ain't no different from me. Why do I need you? Why do I need their church? You know, and and that's where we talk about talking about shining how we hurt the kingdom more than we help it. That's what we got to be careful for. You know, if uh, if we are Christians, that means to be Christ-like. Amen? Amen. That means our lives should mirror His. Now I know, I know, the Bible tells us, you know, we're going to fail at this because we're human. You know, what the, uh, what's old saying, the problem with the church is full of people? You know, because, it, because we're all human. We're all going to fail. The Bible says, for none, uh, for all that sh sh fell short of the glory of God. There's none not righteous, no, not one. Right? We're going to fail, and God knows that. But that don't mean we shouldn't try. That doesn't mean that, that, that we don't... That we don't wake up every morning and, and before our feet hit the ground, we ask the good Lord to, to, to uh, help us. And we put on the armor of God and ask him to keep out the devil because the devil's waiting. As soon as we put that first foot on that first foot on the floor, he's waiting to trip us up. We know that. We live that. Amen? Amen. So, so and, and, but that, that doesn't mean every night when we, go to, we let, lay down and go to bed that we don't say, Lord, Thank you for helping me through this day. Forgive me where I failed you. Just because we know that we're going to fail, like, why, why even bother trying? Because that ain't Christ-like. Christ didn't give up on us. Amen? Amen. And so that's why we, we're to mirror him. <coughs> and uh, that's what, and it, it, it comes out, that's part, of, that's part of our service. That's part of our worship. Over in, uh, over in Ephesians 5, in Ephesians 5, 1 and 2, it says, Therefore... Be imitators of God as dear children. You know, I, I, I watched I watch these two little cute girls up here today. They 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 were uh, uh, their Sunday school teacher brought them up here this morning, and and they were walking behind the children. They looking up to us. They looking up to us to how to behave in church. Look at them sitting over there so good this morning. 
They see it because the people they sit with, they, they're imitating, they're imitating our actions here in church. So, and that's what the world's doing. And that's what we're called to do to, do to God. It says to be imitators of God uh, uh, as dear children and walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling aroma. You know, uh, fine young men came over here and took the offering up and we give we give our, our offerings at, uh, each Sunday and uh, the Bible talks about giving the tithe and all that. But, but more so than our money, God wants us. He wants our lives. That's our offering to him. They, that's our daily offering to him. Now, don't get me wrong. We need to support the church because that's what keeps the doors open. Amen? But, but what keeps, what keeps the, the Christian faith alive is, is us. It's our actions. It's what we carry. You know, uh, you can go and look at statistics. There's all kind of cults popping up and all kind of false religions. And, and, and some of them's growing way faster than Christianity. It's because a lot of it, I say, is because they are dedicated to what they believe. Although it might be misguided, they're dedicated to it. And, and, and sadly enough, Christians have sit, kind of sit back and sit back and just kind of, kind of just watching and observing. There's a lot that, that, that we feel like we get our hands smacked. And, and, one, and I'll tell you, one of my pet peeves is, is we talk about how God's been taken out of school. God ain't, we can't take God out of school. God is omnipresent. He's everywhere. It's our job as Christians to acknowledge him where he's at. He's still in those schools. We got to teach our children to, to, to rise up and to acknowledge him in these places. We need to acknowledge him in, in our workplaces because God's there. Amen. We don't have power as humans to take God out of anywhere. Amen. Amen. So, uh, so he, he, uh, he wants us. He wants us to live for him, to acknowledge him, right? To be that offer. Uh, my Bible, I got the John MacArthur Bible. I like what he says about these verses. So I'm just going to, I ain't going to reword it. I'm just going to tell you what he said. It says, the Christian has no greater calling or purpose than that to imitate the Lord. That is the very purpose of sanctification, which is the growing in likeness of the Lord while serving him on, on earth. That's that offering, right? Serving him in our service. The Christian life is designed to, rep to reproduce godliness as modeled by the Savior, Lord Jesus Christ. So that's one, God sent his son down here not only to pay our sin debt and to be resurrected and take us, but he also sent him down here to be that example for us. When he walked, when he, when he loved the unlovable, when he took the time out to care for those that were cast aside, he lit. We we are to be that. If we're to be Christ-like, we're to follow His earthly example. All right. But uh, it goes on to say that uh, uh, in, uh, to not be modeled by the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, in whose image believers have been recreated through a new birth. Amen. That's the born again part, right? Amen. Remember the whole conversation we had uh, had with Nicodemus. How can one be born again? He said, sit down our chair right there and I'll show you how it's done. But he said, in the new birth, and as God's dear children, believers are become more and more like their heavenly father. I had a Sunday school teacher one, uh, one time that said, if you're the same Christian today that you was last year, then you're not growing. Brothers and sisters, that's a, that's a scary place to be. But don't get me wrong. Uh, I had my devotion for uh, my fireman deputies. I, you know, the other week, it's real easy to get in a rut. It's real easy to fall right back in. You know, we used to go riding four-wheelers up on uh, uh, Brown Mountain. And those trails are so <laughs> rutted out and worn out that it was hard to steer because you'd fall right back down it. Our lives is a lot like that, amen? Right. We, we, we get in that rut, just like my brother was talking about. Sometimes, a lot of times in service, we come in 
And we mumble our way through the hymns, and we kind of go through the motions. We get up, we go to work, and uh, you know, every day should be a new day. Every day we walk into work, it's a same. We might have been working that job thirty years. It's a doing the same thing that we've done for the past thirty years. But the opportunities that God gives you is fresh and new every day, Amen. and that's why we, if we keep our eyes focused on Him then he's going to help us. We're going to see those. And he's going to give us that. He's going to revive us and give us that, that new life. That's one reason we have a revival. Right, brother? Amen. That kind of break us out of that rut, that routine, right? And kind of get us to stir it up a little bit. And uh, so uh, we we are to, uh, to focus on him and let that be let that be our, our offering to him. Uh, but you know, before we can imitate God, we got to know Him. We got to know that we know Him. You know, even uh, we got to have that relationship with Him, because even the demons knew who Jesus was, right? You remember when they came up on the shore and had the man that's uh, running around naked, just scrawling and screaming, and they came up to him and they said, and they uh, said, why, why are you here against them? And they said, and they told him to cast them off into the pigs. You remember that story? They knew who Jesus was, and they knew his power. Even the demons knew his power. They were legions of demons in him. That's right. And all of them, all of them knew who he was. They all fell under his. I'll tell you this. I had uh, I was visiting with the inmate. They had an inmate at the jail that uh, asked to see me, and we would sit down. And uh, I, I met with her, and she said, "Well, she said, I, I'm see, I, I see, I see, seeing demons in the shadows, you know. And I, you know, there's there, there's a lot of people that that that's got some mental instabilities in the world. But who am I to tell what she sees? Because I, the, my Bible tells me there are demons out there. there yeah. We fight those demons off every day. Absolutely. So I don't know what she's seeing. So I give her the only advice I knew. I said." You got a Bible? I said, you see them shadows in your cell? You start reading out the Bible out loud. You start calling out the name of Jesus. I said, them demons are fleeing. I told her about the story about the pigs. Uh, the, the, the demon possessed men in the pigs. And she goes, you know, I never really thought of that. She said, well, I don't know what the rules are about the jail here, about exorcisms. I said, whoa, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm a good old Southern Baptist Christian. I says, I says, I ate fried chicken. I prayed for you. We ain't doing no exorcism. <laughs> but, 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 but in all seriousness, that's true. Whenever we feel those temptations, what did Jesus do when he was tempted? He prayed and he quoted, he quoted God's word. That's exactly right. And, and the devil had no authority over it. But talking about knowing that you know him, even the devil knew God's scripture. Because he tried to he tried to throw it back at him, didn't he? Yes, he did. And then tried to tempt him with that. But no. That's what, brothers and sisters, we gotta walk. In our walk with Christ, we gotta walk close to him. Because the devil, he's a he's a cunning old feller, and he'll hunt us down. He knows our weaknesses. He knows, he knows what our temptations are. Amen. But we gotta know that we know him. We got to have that relationship with him. My brother here was bragging on his wife. I know, I know what you're talking about because I got a good wife. I tell everybody I'm married up. I'm married way up <laughs> because I got a patient wife. I tell you what, it's tough living with a firefighter. Uh, you know, just as aggravating as we are. I'm just telling you. But, uh, but she's patient. She's good to me. Amen. But we couldn't have that relationship if we didn't communicate. We got to talk to God. That's right. Amen. We got to talk to God. We pray to him. That's us talking to him. You know what? When we're sad and down, we need to say, hey, God, I'm sad and down. I turn to you. I know that you're my comfort. I know that you're my strength. Amen. But you know what? We can't just have a one-sided conversation. That's not a relationship. I've, I've met some people that just sit and they talk and talk and talk, and I realize, you know, I ain't got to say nothing yet. And for me, that's pretty, that's pretty bad. But we got to be able to sit and listen. The Bible tells us, be still, know that I'm God. Sometimes we just need to sit down and listen to God's word. How, do, how, do we, how does God talk to us? Right here. He talks to us through his word. 
the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, he lays, he lays conviction on our heart. That's how he talks to us. That's how we have that relationship. That's how we know. And just like there's some days, uh, I did some switching around. I was actually supposed to be on shift today, and I done some switching around, and I'm working Tuesday. I'm, I'm, Wednesday's my day to work, so I'm picking up Tuesday night to, to, because I switched out. And, and there's some weeks between, you know, uh, uh, getting called out for different things and work and, and uh, basketball games. My wife's a teacher, too. But having to work uh, basketball games and, and events at church, sometimes we feel like two shifts passing in the night sometimes. And I can tell when we don't have that conversation, when we don't have, those weeks get so busy that we don't talk, it affects our relationship. Amen. In the same way it is, when we get so busy, we get too busy to, to talk to God. That reflects our relationship with Him Amen. and that walk with Him. Amen. Uh, I once heard uh, said, if we're too busy to talk to God, then we're too busy. Think about that. If we're too busy to have time for God, then we're way too busy. We might need to slow things down. But so if you're going to imitate him, you got to know him. You got to know him. Because when it comes up there and they're shining, and I stand before God and he shines my life, the good and the bad and the ugly on the wall, there's days that I ain't telling you, it shakes my soul of shame. Knowing the things I've done, the things I've left undone. I can't imagine having to stand before God and have it. And the, but that's when Jesus, knowing that you know him and that relationship and walking with him, that's when he says, when I, I probably can't crawl no deeper in the old, can't crawl, that's when Jesus picks me up and says, but this one's with me. Amen. This, is, this, is my, this, is, this, is, this is my child. That's when they pick me up and I have that hope. Knowing that you have that hope. Knowing that you know. But after you know him, there's a couple ways that uh, you can imitate God. And I'm going to give you just three. Just three attributes of God that I think that would reflect him in your life. The first one is God loves. Amen. Amen. It says, what's John 3, 16? For God to love the world that... Uh, he sent his only begotten son that whoever believeth in him should, have, should not perish but have everlasting life. God loves. Now I love all y'all as brothers and sisters. But it'd be hard for me to lay down my son for he not knowing you as well. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Amen. But God, thank God, <laughs> he, he's, more, he, he's, he's more righteous than me because he, that's what exactly what he did. He sent his son down here to die for people that could possibly reject him. And that's still rejecting him. Amen. But God loves us that much. He loves us that much. So we're called to love other people. Now, I'm all about being real. There's some people it's hard to love. Amen. <laughs> There's some people in the church it's hard to love. I'm yeah, sometimes I have to I have to get prayed up. I have to get full of Jesus before I go to church some days. I, I just need being real. The Lord help me. <laughs> but uh, but I dare say I'm not the only one. If God can love those hard to, those hard people, then I'm called to love those hard people. That's right. Everybody can love these sweet little children over here. Everybody loves them. Sometimes we got to call them God to help us love those tough people. But they deserve love too. Amen. 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 And that, that brings us to our second. God provides. When we can't take care of ourselves, God steps in and he gives us that power. He takes care of us. Over in Luke, uh, I won't tell you long, Luke 12, 12 through 31, it says, Don't be anxious for nothing. He said, consider the ravens. Do they worry about what they're going to eat? But God feeds them. And it says, look at the lilies in the fields. Solomon, King Solomon himself is not adorned with the glory that they are, that the beauty that they have. God provides for us. He provides for us. Now, might not always be as the world sees us providing for us. 
He's not, you know, I might not be wearing whatever. I don't know. I'm, I'm getting old enough. I don't even know what the latest styles are. You know, the, the Nikes or the, the Gucci's or whatever they are, whatever the, the name brand stuff is. I'm still wearing my Walmart stuff, you know. <laughs> but, uh, but he provides. I've got clothes on my back, and you can tell I've got plenty of food on my table. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> he provides. But another thing that I believe is the thing that we struggle with the most sometimes is God forgives. God forgives. Over back in uh, 1 John, it says, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But listen to this. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God forgives. Just like them hard to love people. I think I mentioned this last time. Uh, last time I was here, because I, I preach on it a lot. Lord, Brother Jason, you don't know. I can't forgive them. You don't know what they've done to me. No, I don't. And I'm sure many of us sitting in here has had some deep hurts. We've had people hurt us. Loved ones hurt us. Maybe spouses hurt us. But when we hold on to that hate, we can't walk with God. Amen, God. That affects our walk with God. Because my Bible says that God's love it does say that he hates sin. Now, I ain't saying we got to accept everything that these people do to us. But when we hold contempt in our heart to somebody, that can, that, that, that contempt can affect our relationship with the Lord. And we need to be careful of it. You know, and, and, uh, I believe we were talking, uh, sister back here gave me gave me a preacher that was talking about the, what everything's going on in Israel and all this. I believe a lot of the conflicts that we face in this world is because of build up of unforgiveness. And I'm going to come and I'm going to get you for getting me because you got me and I'm going to get you back. Where do we sit down and say, this is enough of this mess. Let's put it all aside and let's start right here and start anew. Because you look, you go go back, a lot of what we're looking at is man's mess. Yeah. It's man's mess. Poor old Abraham. Old Father Abraham had many sons. Unfortunately, them many sons, is probably, we're, we're still uh, uh, seeing the ripples of that effect today between his sons of, uh, with Sarah, his sons of uh, Hagar, right? All the Ishmaelites. And uh, going on, look, the uh, sons to his uh, wife after Sarah passed away with Terah. That's where the Midianites and all the ones that the Israelites on oh, the Old Testament struggled with. That, that, that was all that, it all comes up. And it's just, it's just lost so much content, con, uh, contentment there. They, 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 they just can't, they can't, we can't get along. And I think that's what's affecting us. We get so busy arguing about colors of the carpets and, and, and what songs we're going to sing sometimes that, that, that we get distracted of what our, our, our true purpose to be. Remember what our greatest calling is, is to be like Christ. Over in uh, 1 Corinthians 10, I'm going to have bookmarks all over it. <laughs> Y'all might have to save them for me. But, uh, over in 1 Corinthians 10, at the end of the chapter, end of chapter 11, it says, Therefore, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all in the glory of God. Give no offense either to the Jews or the Greeks or to the church of God, just as I also please all men and all things, not seeking for profit for my own profit, but for the profit of many, that they may be saved. And in 11.1 1, it says, Imitate me just as I also imitate Christ. 
When I first read this, I thought, right here, Paul's telling them the, the, the Corinthians to imitate him. I thought, well, dang, that's pretty bold. But it's saying, imitate the Christ that you see in me. Because uh, there's a lot of people out there, the only Jesus they see is the Jesus that we go out there and show them. And I believe that's what that's talking about there. We And if we go out and if we call up and uh, talking about the forgiveness and, and, and heaven forbid, we act on that and we it's down here it's not to offend other people. Now, Ken, I told you I might be real. I'm going to tell them myself right here. <coughs> we took our junior firefighters down to Hickory the other day doing a little bit of training. We was coming back and here I was riding with my junior firefighters that I preach about how you walk. You know, try to you know, guard your wall, guard your talk, and all that. We come back, and uh, it's, it's Camaro come wheeling around us about, I don't know, he had to be going 80 miles an hour, pulled over and cut me off. And I got plumb frustrated. <laughs> Here I was, you know, that's just me being real. I ain't no better than nobody else. But, and I, I, I start, I caught myself, gave it a little bit of gas, because he got, I, I got a chuckle. Because after he whipped around me, he got caught by the red light, and I was still up there with him. So, you know, and I kind of got up there, and I was kind of easy. I was like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. What am I preaching on tomorrow? <laughs> you know? I was just, uh-oh, uh-oh. Okay, Lord, I see it. You know, remember last time when I said you point one finger, you got three pointing back at you? This message has whooped me all, <laughs> all week long. I'm just saying. But how easy is that? How easy is that? If we'll be real with ourselves, and we need to, that we can justify all we want to. Say, well, I'm better than so and so down the road. He ain't been to church in 10 years. But guess what? He ain't called to be better than so and so down the road. We're called to imitate our Savior Amen. that walked a perfect life. The only one, the last time I checked, that walked a perfect life. Sometimes we get kind of puffed up on our self-righteous salvation, you know. <laughs> we got to be careful of that. Because I tell you what, before I got saved, before I become a believer, I worked with a lot of people that were strong in church. They were bold. They was real quick to tell me I was going to hell. But the way they said it turned me off. Sometimes church folks, the way we present things, don't, don't get me wrong, we to call a spade a spade, or a, a diamond a diamond, or a heart a heart, whatever. But we're supposed to do it in love. Right. Because we're pushing away the lost world that needs to hear the same salvation that was preached to us. Amen. You notice that Jesus, the woman at the wheel, you know, he's like, well, yeah, yeah. He, he knew. He knew she'd been married five times. He called her out. You know, you you've been married five times, and the man you're with now ain't, ain't, your, ain't your husband. I thought it was Leah then. Well, you know. Uh, she was living with the man now. That's right. She, it was five of them, or whatever you want to call them. Amen, brother? <laughs> and But but he didn't, he didn't sit there and chastise her. He, he said, that's wrong. But let me tell you how to get right. That's what we're called to do. Sometimes we get, we, we so want, I'm telling you, in the firehouse, I'm hearing it right now. We're so ready to write what is other people's story. We can't wait. We want to get the, we, we want the lowdown, the gossip. <laughs> but that ain't what Jesus is. No. No. It don't matter story behind it. Anyway. So I'm going to ask you today. Do you know him? Do you know him? If not, we need to make it right today. Let today be the day of your salvation. If you come down, there's, I, I'll be glad to talk to anybody. we got people in here that will rejoice coming of the lost. But more important, if we do know him, what are we doing with it? What are we doing with that knowledge? 
Are we presenting in such a way to win the lost world? Are we walking with God to help keep us on track? <laughs> like I say, anything I look up, anything I study, any of my devotions I send out, they whoop me. It's something that the, I tell them, I said, hey, hey, don't feel bad if I stepped on your toes. Mine's, <laughs> mine's sore. I've stepped on mine all week. But we got to be real. We can't, we, we got to be able to acknowledge that we are. We are weak. But it's our weakness that we're made strong through him. Amen. Because I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, one of these days, we'll stand up there and we'll answer for the things we do. Or didn't do. Praise God, we got hope. I praise God that it's not based on my actions and my words. I praise God that He loved me more than I could ever love anybody in this world enough to send His Son to die for us, to die for me. My brother talked about saying God, Isaiah 41 10. Is one of my favorite verses. It says, Fear not. For God holds you in his righteous right hand. And when I stand with the families of a house that's been burned down, when I stand with the family like I did last week, with the family when their loved one was found in the river up here in Collegeville, and I stand, I could say, Don't worry, fear not. Because the same hand that created all those universes that my brother was talking about up here is holding you. And if he can create all of that, surely he can handle our problems. Little old me, he can, he can, he cares for me too. So today, as we come to a close, I like for us to tap at this teacher, and we gotta give you homework. You ain't getting out here without some homework. This week. Take your time and think about how's my walk with God. When I meet with the inmates over there, I ask them, I was like, do you have faith? That usually opens up the door to find out kind of where they're coming from. And I ask them, and they, y'all, well, I, I ain't done good. I, you know, that's where they were. I, I'm not your priest. You don't confess to me. I'm here to encourage you on your walk. I'm here to encourage you on your walk. Because that's what Jesus did for his disciples. Sometimes he had to, hey, psh, psh, that, that, ain't, that ain't right. Sometimes he had to call them out, thump them on the head like my, you know, like they used to do back in the olden days. You get misbehaved and you ain't paying attention, he'd thump you on the head. But I uh, probably got some knobs up here. Probably deserved, well, not probably, I deserved all of them. But sometimes, we just need to stop and slow down. And that's what I encourage you this week is stop. Let it be today. The altar's open. I think we're going to have another song here in a minute to, just to kind of close us out. Let it be a time for us to examine our hearts. So when we walk out this door, so we wake up in the morning and step out in, into our jobs and our regular lives, we ain't stuck in that rut. But we're, we're out there to shine his goodness and his glory to a lost world. Let's pray.